which state has launched the campaign my family my responsibility to tackle covid-19 right answer is maharashtra maharashtra government has launched a state wide campaign called my family my responsibility to prevent the spread of coronavirus under this campaign door to door survey will be conducted by bmc bmc means brihan mumbai municipal corporation bmc will visit the residents to check the citizens for fever low oxygen levels and other covid-19 symptoms this campaign will be conducted in two phases one is from 15th september to 10th october and the second phase will be conducted from 12th october to 24th october some important points about maharashtra are india's first kisan train was started from maharashtra's devlali next important point is mumbai is the first city in india to have women symbols on traffic signals and sign boards next point is postal department has launched five star scheme recently and this scheme was launched in maharashtra on a pilot basis another point is government of india signed an agreement with asian infrastructure investment bank for us dollar 500 million to improve the suburban railway system in mumbai and the last one neela satyanarayanan passed away recently she was the first woman election commissioner of maharashtra about maharashtra mumbai is the capital of maharashtra chief minister is uddhav thakre and governor is bhagat singh koshyari next question is paytm has appointed sachin tendulkar as brand ambassador for its which gaming platform answer is paytm first games paytm has appointed sachin tendulkar as brand ambassador for its paytm first games paytm first games is a subsidiary of paytm sachin tendulkar will promote the paytm games first and all its fantasy sports such as cricket kabaddi football and basketball i'll just remind you all the recent brand ambassadors once so that you can remember them easily unicef india has appointed bollywood actor aishman kurana as its brand ambassador for children's rights campaign for every child and he is also the brand ambassador of bajaj aliens cricketers smriti mandana and bhuvaneshwar kumar were appointed as brand ambassadors of player spot other indian cricketers suresh raina and harman preet kaur were appointed as global brand ambassadors of wtf sports and also sport up has appointed dwayne bravo as its brand ambassador rohit sharma has been appointed as the brand ambassador of okle e bigo has appointed harbhajan singh as its brand ambassador and also bretley has been appointed as the brand ambassador of sports adda and last one mintra has appointed bollywood actress kaira adwani as its brand ambassador next question cabinet approved establishment of new all india institute of medical sciences in which state recently correct answer is bihar the union cabinet chaired by the prime minister narendra modi has approved establishment of a new all india institute of medical sciences at darbanga bihar The total cost of setting the project will be rupees one thousand two sixty four crore and is likely to be completed within a period of forty eight months. Establishment of this new aims involves creation of hospital, teaching block for medical and nursing courses. This will be established under the Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Yojana. Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Yojana aims at affordable healthcare facilities in different parts of the country and. to provide quality medical education through this scheme government will set up new aims at different states and also upgrade the existing institutes next question when is international day of democracy celebrated correct answer is 15th september the international day of democracy is celebrated across the world on 15th september each year the theme for 2020 international day of democracy is covid-19 a spotlight on democracy this day was established through a resolution passed by the united nations general assembly in 2007 with the purpose of promoting and upholding the principles of democracy and to review the state of democracy in the world under democracy people have the right to choose their government representatives next question which telecom company has launched the integrated 4g network giganet right answer is vi vi means vodafone idea vi has launched 
GigaNet network that is an integrated 4G network. With the launch of GigaNet, VI aims to overcome the loss of customers and attract new customers. GigaNet offers faster downloads and uploads, low latency and real-time connectivity and also it is built on many principles of 5G architecture that help in delivering a superior network experience. Recently, Vodafone Idea has rebranded as VI to reduce costs. As discussed in previous video, Vodafone Idea is a joint venture between Britain's Vodafone and Idea Cellular. Next one. Swami Agnivesh passed away recently. What was he famous for? Answer is social activist. Swami Agnivesh was a social activist and Arya Samaj leader. He is known for his contribution against slavery and bonded labor. He was the chairperson of the United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund on Contemporary Forms of Slavery from 1994 to 2004. Later, he served as the president of the World Council of Arya Samaj between 2004 and 2014. He also served as a politician in the past. He was elected as a member of the Legislative Assembly of Haryana in 1977 and served as a cabinet minister for education in 1979. Next question. Who has been re-elected as the deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha? Correct answer is Harivan Narayan Singh. Harivan Narayan Singh has been re-elected as the deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha. He completed his term as a member of Rajya Sabha this year and hence there was a need for an election. Remember some points about Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is called as the upper house of the parliament. Its present chairman is M. Venkai Naidu. Leader of the house is Tavarchand Gehlot and leader of opposition is Gulam Nabi Azad. Rajya Sabha has a total seats of 245 out of which 233 are elected and remaining 12 are nominated. Do you know when was the Parliament of India founded? It was in 1950. Next question. Asian Development Bank has projected the Indian economy to contract by what percent in fiscal year 21? Answer is 9%. The Asian Development Bank has estimated that the GDP of India is expected to contract by 9% in the fiscal year 2020-21. However, for the fiscal year 21-22, ADB expects India's GDP at 8%. ADB also expects the GDP growth for Asia at minus 0.7% in 2020 and this is the first negative economic growth since 1962. About Asian Development Bank, it was formed in 1966. Its current president is Masatsugu Asakawa and its headquarters is in Manila, Philippines. Next one. Who has been appointed as the executive director at Asian Development Bank? Correct answer is Samir Kumar Kare. Samir Kumar Kare has been appointed executive director of the Asian Development Bank. He is a 1989 batch IAS officer of Assam Meghalaya cadre and is currently serving as the additional secretary in the Department of Economic Affairs. Yesterday we discussed about another appointment that is executive director at World Bank. Remember, Rajesh Kullar has been appointed as the Executive Director at World Bank and Samir Kumar Kare has been appointed as the Executive Director of Asian Development Bank. Next one. When is National Engineers Day celebrated? Correct answer is 15th September. National Engineers Day is celebrated on September 15th every year since 1968. This is being celebrated to recognize the contribution of engineers in the development of the nation. This day marks the birth anniversary of the engineering pioneer of India, Sri Mokshagundam Vishweshwaraya. He was regarded as the father of modern Mysore and he was awarded Bharat Ratna in 1955 for his exceptional contribution to the country. Titan has partnered with which bank for its contactless payment watches named Titan Pay? Right answer is State Bank of India. Titan partners with State Bank of India to launch contactless payment watches named Titan Pay. Remember, Titan Pay is India's first contactless payment watch. This watch is powered by SBI Yono, by which SBI customers can tap their Titan Pay watch on a contactless payment POS machines for making payments. Through this, 
payments of up to rupees 2000 can be made without entering the pin this watch is embedded with a secure certified near field communication chip which enables the tap and pay feature in the watch this chip was developed by tappy technologies titan was founded in 1984 and it is part of the tata group titan introduced brands like fast track sonata and tanishq jewelers its headquarters is in bengaluru karnataka next question Famousino International Airport of which country became world's first airport to earn COVID-19 five star airport rating from Skytrax correct answer is Italy the Famousino International Airport is located in Rome Italy it has become the first airport in the world to be certified with COVID-19 five star airport rating from Skytrax Skytrax is a UK based airport and airline review firm This airport is also known as the Leonardo da Vinci International Airport and it is the busiest airport in Italy. These ratings are based on a combination of procedural efficiency checks, visual observation analysis and ATP sampling tests. This airport earned the 5 star rating for the hygiene processes and other preventative measures to help reduce the spread of coronavirus. Where is Italy located? It is in Europe. its capital is rome and currency is euro next question government extended pradhan mantri garib kalyan package insurance scheme for health workers fighting covid-19 for another 6 months what is the amount of insurance coverage under this scheme correct answer is 50 lakh the insurance coverage under pradhan mantri garib kalyan package insurance scheme for health workers fighting covid-19 is 50 lakh this scheme has been extended for another 6 months till march 2021 this scheme was announced on 30th march 2020 for a period of 90 days that is till june 2020 later this was extended for a further period of 3 months that is up to 25th september 2020 and again now from 26th of this month this will be extended till march 2021 so remember under this scheme government aims to provide an insurance cover of rupees 50 lakh to over 22 lakh public health care providers next question india became the member of united nations commission on status of women for how many years recently correct answer is 4 years india has been elected as the member of the united nations commission on status of women for 4 years from 2021 to 2025 This commission is responsible for promoting gender equality and the empowerment of women and this is a functional commission of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. India, China and Afghanistan had contested the elections for the membership out of which India and Afghanistan have been elected and China has failed to be elected. This commission was founded in 1946 and its headquarters is in New York, USA. Next question. Lok Sabha passed a bill to reduce salaries of MPs for a tenure of 1 year by what percent? Answer is 30%. The Lok Sabha has passed the Salary Allowances and Pension of Members of Parliament Amendment Bill 2020 to cut salaries of all members of parliaments by 30% for a period of 1 year. This is with effective from 1st April 2020. This decision was taken to meet the urgent financial need arising out of covid-19 pandemic the salary allowances and pension of members of parliament amendment bill 2020 will replace the salary allowances and pension of members of parliament ordinance 2020 this ordinance was cleared by the union cabinet on 6th april 2020 and now the bill has been passed in the lok sabha remember lok sabha is called as the lower house of the parliament Do you remember who is the current Lok Sabha speaker Om Birla Next question Which edition of Indo US Defense Technology and Trade Initiative group meeting was held recently Correct answer is 10th edition The 10th edition of Indo US Defense Technology and Trade Initiative group meeting was held through virtual platform This meeting will be held twice in a year alternatively between India and United States but this time it was held virtually this meeting is part of indo us bilateral defense cooperation and 
the bilateral defense trade relationship. Both the countries signed a statement of intent to strengthen the defense technology cooperation, co-development and production of military equipment. From Indian side, Raj Kumar, Secretary of Defense Production has co-chaired in this virtual meeting. Next question. Who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of great learning? Answer is Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli has been appointed as the brand ambassador of great learning. Great learning is an educational tech company for professionals and for higher education and it has a reputation for delivering high quality education and career transformations. Virat Kohli will lead the brand's latest campaign named Power Ahead. Yesterday we discussed about brand ambassadors. You can watch yesterday's video to know all the recent brand ambassadors. Next question. When is International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer observed? Correct answer is 16th September. The International Day for the Preservation of Ozone Layer or World Ozone Day is observed annually on 16th September. This day is observed to spread awareness about the depletion of the ozone layer and work towards preserving the ozone layer. This day was designated by the United Nations General Assembly in the year 2000 to commemorate the signing of the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer in 1987. Montreal Protocol means it is an international treaty designed to protect the ozone layer. The theme for 2020 is Ozone for Life, 35 Years of Ozone Layer Protection. Next question. Who has been appointed as Asian Development Bank's Country Director for India? Answer is Takio Konishi. The Asian Development Bank has appointed Takio Konishi as its new Country Director for India. Konishi will replace Kenichi Yokoyama who has taken over as Director General of ADB South Asia Department. Remember India is the fourth largest shareholder of ADB and has been its largest borrower since 2010. Let me remind you a question we discussed yesterday. Samir Kumar Kare has been appointed as Executive Director of the Asian Development Bank. We also discussed about its foundation year, its president and headquarters yesterday. ADB was formed in 1966. Its current president is Masatsugu Asakawa and its headquarters is in Manila, Philippines. Next one. Sadashiv Patil passed away recently. What was his profession? Answer is cricketer. Sadashiv Patil was a former cricketer from Maharashtra. He played as a medium pacer. He represented India in only one test match and played 36 first class matches between 1952 and 1964. His only test match was against New Zealand in 1955. Which state is ranked as the happiest state in India? As per India Happiness Report 2020, correct answer is Mizoram. Mizoram has been ranked first in the India Happiness Report 2020. This is India's first happiness report which covered all the states and union territories to measure happiness across the country. After Mizoram, Punjab is in second rank and Andaman and Nicobar Islands is in third rank. This report is based on a nationwide survey which covered 16,950 people between March and July of 2020. Also remember this report has been compiled by Professor Rajesh K. Pilania. Remember his name as this is India's first happiness report. Some recent important news about Mizoram are Zoram Mega Food Park was recently inaugurated in Mizoram. Tenzal Golf Resort Project was also inaugurated in Mizoram recently. And another point is Green Agriculture Project was also launched in Mizoram. And about Mizoram, capital of Mizoram is Aizal, Chief Minister is Zoram Tanga and Governor is P.S. Sridharan Pillai. Next question. Which state has launched Ardhika Spandana Loan Dispersal Scheme recently? Answer is Karnataka. Karnataka government has launched Ardhika Spandana Scheme to disperse loans of Rs. 39,300 crores under this scheme. Rupees 15,300 crore will be disbursed to the agriculture sector and remaining 24,000 crore will be disbursed for non-agriculture sector. These loans will be disbursed through cooperative institutions of the state. Under this scheme, agricultural cooperatives will be upgraded to multi-service centers by which 
1549 cooperatives will be benefited the target of the state government is to disperse crop loans of rupees 15300 crore by the end of 2020 some recent news you need to remember about karnataka are the 13th edition of aero india 2021 will be held at air force station elahanka bengaluru karnataka recently karnataka cabinet approved a new information technology policy 2020 Karnataka government announced to build transit homes to migrant workers to provide better living conditions. What is the capital of Karnataka? Bengaluru. Chief Minister is B.S. Yadurappa and Governor is Vajubai Wala. Next question is, who inaugurated the fourth global Ayurveda summit recently? Correct answer is M. Venkaya Naidu. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has inaugurated the fourth edition of global Ayurveda summit virtually. The aim of this summit is to highlight the importance of Ayurveda in boosting the immunity at global level with the name Health as One and Immunity through Ayurveda and also to highlight the Ayurveda model as a solution for immunity. The theme for this summit is Emerging Opportunities for Ayurveda During Pandemic. This summit was organized by Confederation of Indian Industry Kerala in association with Ministry of Ayush. Do you know what is the full form of Ayush? It is Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. Next question is, which country became the first country in the world to issue sovereign bond linked to United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? Right answer is Mexico. Mexico has become the first country in the world to issue a sovereign bond linked to the Sustainable Development Goals set by the United Nations. Remember there are 17 Sustainable Development Goals of United Nations and these are intended to be achieved by the year 2030. Some important goals among these 17 include gender equality, quality education, climate action, affordable and green energy, clean water and sanitation, zero hunger etc. As part of this, Mexico has issued these bonds and raised 700 million euros. These Sustainable Development Goals bond will mature in September 2027. This new bond was issued under Mexico's new SDG Sovereign Bond Framework which was released in February in partnership with French investment bank Natixis. About Mexico, Mexico is a country in North America. Its capital is Mexico City and currency is Mexican Peso. Next question. When is World Patient Safety Day observed? Correct answer is 17th September. The World Patient Safety Day is observed on 17th September every year. This day is observed globally to create awareness for patient safety and to show commitment to make healthcare safer. The theme for 2020 is Safe Health Workers, Safe Patients. The World Health Organization observed the first World Patient Safety Day in 2019. It was adopted at the 72nd World Health Assembly on 25th May 2019. Next question. Which cricketer has been appointed as the brand ambassador of online poker platform 9stacks? Answer is Suresh Raina. Suresh Raina has been appointed as the brand ambassador of 9stacks. 9stacks is India's fastest growing online poker platform. He will engage in the 9stacks upcoming campaigns and will help the brand to reach the target audience. Also remember, he was recently appointed as brand ambassador of WTF Sports as well. Also remember, he announced his retirement from cricket recently in August 2020. Next question is, which country became the first country to mandate climate risk disclosures? Answer is New Zealand. New Zealand became the first country to pass legislation under which financial entities has to declare their climate related risks. Recently, a framework was laid down by the task force on climate related financial disclosures. Under this, the financial entities in New Zealand will have to comply with the framework. If businesses are unable to disclose their certain data, they need to provide an explanation to the designated authorities. This rule will apply to banks, insurers and all listed debt and equity issuers. The passage of this law was termed as a step towards a cleaner, safer planet. About New Zealand, it is a country in Oceania. Its capital is Wellington and currency is New Zealand dollar. Next question is, Baijus has launched which social initiative to empower 5 million children by 2025? Correct answer is Education for All. Baijus has launched a social initiative named 
education for all under which Baijus aim to empower 5 million children from underserved communities by 2025. This program aims at democratizing education by ensuring that children across all economic backgrounds get equal access to quality learning opportunities. This initiative will bridge the educational and digital divide by making the quality learning accessible to the children in need. Baijus is an educational technology company. It was founded in 2011 by Baiju Ravindran. Its headquarters is in Bengaluru, Karnataka. Next question is, Government of India increased scholarship amount for Jammu and Kashmir students under Paragati and Saksham scheme from rupees 5000 to how much amount? Answer is 50,000. Government has increased the scholarship amount for Jammu and Kashmir students from 5000 to 50,000 under Pragati and Saksham schemes. This is being implemented by All India Council for Technical Education. Pragati scheme is for girls whose family's annual income is less than 8 lakh per annum and are pursuing technical education are eligible for this. And the Saksham scheme is this is for specially able students with 40% disability and whose family's income is less than 8 lakh per annum and are pursuing technical education are eligible for this. Next one, Mausa Traore passed away recently. He was a former president of which country? Correct answer is Mali. Mausa Traore was a former president of Mali. Previously, he was a military leader. Later, he forcibly took over the power and he was in power from 1968 to 1991. In 1991, he stepped down due to protests and a military takeover. Mali is a country in West Africa. Capital of Mali is Bamako and currency is West African franc. ICICI Home Finance has launched which home loan scheme for skilled workers recently? Correct answer is Apnagar Dreams. ICICI Home Finance has launched a new loan scheme named Apnagar Dreams for skilled workers. This home loan product was launched with focus on people who have never taken a loan before or have a good history of repaying loans but do not have formal documents like income tax returns. The loan amount offered under this scheme is rupees 2 lakh to rupees 30 lakh and up to 50 lakh in Mumbai and Delhi. Now I'll remind you of some important initiatives launched by different banks. Listen carefully, these are very important points. Kodak Mahindra Bank has launched Kona Kona Umid campaign. HDFC Bank has launched Shaurya KGC card for Indian Armed Forces. Axis Bank has launched an initiative named Gig A Opportunities. State Bank of India announced to launch a loan product called Safal for Organic Cotton Growers. Digital Apnae campaign was launched by Punjab National Bank to promote digital banking. HSBC India became the first foreign bank in India to launch a green deposit program. Shagun Gift and Insurance Policy was launched by SBI General Insurance. NABAT has recently launched Structured Finance and Partial Guarantee Program for non-banking finance companies and microfinance institutions and also NABAD has organized Digital Chopal to mark its 39th Foundation Day. And the last one is ICICI Bank has launched iStartup 2.0 for startups and entrepreneurs and also launched Virtual Property Exhibition Home Utsav. Now we'll see the next question. Which state has launched Mukhya Mantri Mahila Utkarsh Yojana recently? Right answer is Gujarat. Gujarat government has launched a scheme called Mukhya Mantri Mahila Utkarsh Yojana under which interest-free loans will be provided to women's groups in the state. Through this scheme, women groups with the name, joint liability and earning group will be formed. Each group will have 10 members and a total of 1 lakh groups will be formed. 50,000 groups will be formed in rural areas and another 50,000 groups will be formed in urban areas. And each of these 1 lakh groups will be provided interest-free loan of 1 lakh. What is the capital of Gujarat? Gandhinagar. Chief Minister is Vijay Rupani and Governor is Acharya Devrat. Next question is, what is India's rank in World Bank's Human Capital Index 2020? Correct answer is 116th rank. India has been ranked at 116th position in the World Bank's Human Capital Index 2020, which is being published annually. World Bank has ranked 174 countries in this index, 
the top rank country is Singapore. The human capital index measures the human capital based on the current health and education and its outcomes which impact the productivity of the next generation of workers. The points you need to remember here is Singapore is in the top rank, India's rank is 116th rank and this index is released by World Bank. As this question includes World Bank, we will see when was the World Bank formed and its headquarters. Remember it was formed in 1944 and its headquarters is in Washington DC United States. Next question is which Indian teenager has been named in United Nations 2020 list of young leaders for sustainable goals? Right answer is Udit Singhal. Udit Singhal an 18 year old Indian boy has been included by the United Nations in the 2020 class of 17 young leaders for the sustainable development goals. Remember there are 17 sustainable development goals of United Nations. Udit Singhal is the founder of Glass to Sand. Glass to Sand is a zero waste ecosystem that addresses the growing threat due to glass waste in Delhi. This initiative has prevented empty glass bottles from getting dumped into landfills and instead turned it into sands which made it commercially feasible. The Young Leaders for Sustainable Goals is organized every two years by the Office of the United Nations Secretary General's NY on Youth. This recognition is the highest profile recognition for young people who are contributing their efforts towards achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I'll just remind you the United Nations Foundation year, its Secretary General and its headquarters. It was formed in 1945. Its current Secretary General is Antonio Guterres and its headquarters is in New York. Next question is, where is the Kosi Rail Mega Bridge inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi recently? Right answer is Bihar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated Kosi Rail Mega Bridge in Bihar through video conference. This bridge connects the Mithila and Kosi region. By this, the rail distance has come down from 298 km to just 22 km. The length of this rail bridge is 1.9 km and the cost of this bridge is rupees 516 crore. Remember there was a rail link in this route which was washed away due to heavy flood and earthquake in 1934 and later no steps have been taken to reconstruct the bridge. Now this has been completed. About Bihar, capital of Bihar is Patna, chief minister is Nitish Kumar and governor is Pagu Chauhan. Next question is, when is World Bamboo Day observed? Right answer is 18th September. World Bamboo Day is observed every year on 18th September to raise awareness of the benefits of bamboo and to promote its use in everyday products. The theme for 2020 World Bamboo Day is Bamboo Now. This day was officially declared by the World Bamboo Organization on 18th September 2009 at the World Bamboo Congress held in Bangkok. Remember, Indian government has launched National Bamboo Mission in 2006 and 7 and later restructured National Bamboo Mission in 2018. This mission aims to promote holistic growth of bamboo sector by adopting area-based regionally differentiated strategy and to increase the area under bamboo cultivation and marketing. This includes setting up of new nurseries and strengthening the existing ones and to take steps to strengthen marketing of bamboo products, especially handicraft items. And the next question is, Vikas Kanna has been named for 2020 Asia Game Changer Award. What was his profession? Correct answer is, he was a chef. New York based Vikas Kanna is a chef. He has been named for 2020 Asia Game Changer Award for feeding millions across India during COVID-19 pandemic. He did this through a massive food distribution drive, Feed India. Remember, the name is Feed India. He coordinated this massive food distribution drive in India from New York. He is the only Indian among the six honorees named for this award. The Asia Game Changer Awards was launched by the Asia Society, a US based non-profit organization in 2014 to identify and honor the people who make a positive contribution to the future of Asia. Next question is, who is the author of the book title Azadi, 
freedom fascism fiction right answer is arundhati roy arundhati roy is the author of the book azadi freedom fascism fiction the book is about freedom in the world of growing authoritarianism especially during the time of coronavirus pandemic this book has been published by the penguin books limited next question who has announced his first presidential memoir titled a promised land recently answer is barack obama former us president barack obama has announced his first presidential memoir titled a promised land what is memoir it means biography this is a 768 pages book and is the first of two volumes of the book this volume includes his early political life his presidential campaign in 2008 and ends with the death of osama bin laden in 2011 this book will be published by penguin random house and will be released in november 2020 next question is who has been given an additional charge as union food processing minister recently answer is narendra singh tomar narendra singh tomar has been given an additional charge as union food processing minister after the current minister harsimrat kaur badal has announced her resignation from the union council of ministers with immediate effect president ramnath kovin has accepted her resignation as well as directed union minister narendra singh tomar to take additional charge of the ministry of food processing industries remember narendra singh tomar also holds the portfolio of minister of agriculture and farmers welfare and minister of rural development state bank of india has launched a women self reliance program named mahila atmanirbhar chali achani in which state recently right answer is assam state bank of india launched mahila atmanirbhar chali achani a women self reliance program in assam to accelerate the finance for self help groups this program empowers the women by encouraging them to create their micro enterprises for self reliance and to maintain a sustainable economic condition the main objective of this program is to create a strong bonding with the self help group members to achieve self reliance and economic upliftment by extending credit linkages to the women self help groups under national rural livelihood mission assam national rural livelihood mission is a program launched by the central government to organize the poor into self help groups and make them capable for self employment yesterday we discussed about a question related to women self help groups of gujarat i'll just remind you that that is gujarat government has launched a scheme called mukhyamantri mahila utkarsh yojana under which interest free loans will be provided to women self help groups now we'll see some recent important news about assam assam government has launched a scheme for women empowerment that is arunodaya scheme and another point is the longest rope way in india was inaugurated by the government of assam over brahmaputra river recently and another point is assam government announced that poba reserve forest will be upgraded to a wildlife sanctuary and about assam capital of assam is dispur chief minister is sarbananda sonowal and its governor is jagdish mukhi next question is how many indian beaches have been recommended for the blue flag certification eco label recently correct answer is 8 8 indian beaches have been recommended for the blue flag certification the blue flag certificate is an internationally recognized eco label given by foundation of environment education denmark blue flag beaches are considered as a benchmark for clean and hygienic beaches in the world the selection of these eight beaches was made by an independent national jury composed of eminent environmentalists and scientists and then recommended for an eco label by blue flag certification along this india has also launched its own eco label called beams remember the name it is beams its full form is beach environment and aesthetics management services this beams program aims to prevent pollution in coastal waters promote sustainable development of beach facilities maintain high standards of cleanliness hygiene and safety for beach goers in accordance with the coastal environment and regulations do you remember who is the union minister of environment forest and climate change it is prakash javdekar next question is which bank has launched ilead 2.0 initiative to improve business relationship with the customers correct answer is canara bank canara bank has launched ilead 2.0 initiative to improve business relationship with its existing and new customers 
this initiative aims that each and every customer gets their banking needs covered irrespective of where they are based urban or rural this enables the customers with easiest and most comfortable ways of reaching out to the bank customers can use internet banking mobile banking call center sms and missed call services to enquire and get services rendered to them also this is a step towards the goal of making people financially self reliant do you remember canara bank merged with which bank it is syndicate bank canara bank was merged with syndicate bank on 1st april 2020 canara bank was founded in 1906 and it was nationalized in 1969 its current md and ceo is lingam venkat prabhakar and its headquarters is in bengaluru karnataka next question is karnataka vikas gramina bank has launched which special gold loan scheme for pandemic right answer is vikas lagu suvarna karnataka vikas gramina bank has launched a special gold loan scheme called vikas lagu suvarna for pandemic this special gold loan scheme offers a reduced interest rate of 7.25% this scheme was launched at a reduced rate mainly due to the pandemic so as to provide easy and affordable credit to customers at a cheaper cost under the new gold loan scheme the customer will get 80% of the market value of the gold and to a maximum of rupees 3200 per gram a customer can avail up to maximum loan of rupees 15 lakh which will be repayable within a period of maximum 6 months the karnataka vikas gramina bank is an indian regional rural bank sponsored by canara bank it was founded in 2005 its chairman is puttaganti gopi krishna and its headquarters is in darwad karnataka next question is which bank has topped the 2020 brands top 75 most valuable indian brands ranking right answer is hdfc bank hdfc bank has topped the brands top 75 most valuable indian brands 2020 rankings remember hdfc bank has topped this ranking for the 7th consecutive year it has a total brand value of more than 20.2 billion us dollar after hdfc lic is in the second rank and tata consulting services is in third rank next question is when was the international coastal cleanup day observed in 2020 right answer is 19 september international coastal cleanup day was observed on 19 september remember this day is being observed every year on third saturday in september so in 2020 this day was observed on 19 september the theme for 2020 is achieving a trash free coastline the first international coastal cleanup day was observed in 1986 this day aims to increase public awareness about the accumulation and negative impacts of litter in oceans coastlines and beaches next question is which airport has launched india's first terminal facility for chartered and jet planes recently correct answer is indira gandhi international airport india's first terminal facility for chartered and jet planes launched at indira gandhi international airport where is this airport located it is in delhi this is india's first exclusive general aviation terminal facility for the operations of chartered flights and private jets this was inaugurated by civil aviation minister who is civil aviation minister hardeep singh puri this terminal has 57 parking bays and is capable of handling more than 150 private jets every day this general aviation facility includes all non scheduled non military civilian flight operations which is not flown by a commercial airline or by the military next question is which former prime minister took oath as a rajya sabha mp from karnataka recently right answer is hd devagoda former prime minister of india hd devagoda took oath as a member of the rajya sabha from karnataka he was elected to the rajya sabha in june 2020 and took oath as the mp on 28 september 2020 remember hd devagoda was the 11th prime minister of india from 1st june 1996 to 21st april 1997 before this he had also served as the 14th chief minister of karnataka from 1994 to 1996 next question is which state became the first state in india to launch artificial intelligence blockchain and cyber security policies correct answer is tamil nadu Tamil Nadu has become the first state in India to launch policies on artificial intelligence blockchain and cyber security for this Tamil Nadu has launched Tamil Nadu cyber security policy 2020 Tamil Nadu blockchain policy 2020 and Tamil Nadu safe and ethical artificial intelligence policy 2020 to implement these policies Tamil Nadu government will establish state family database and blockchain backbone infrastructure next question is 
Ashok Gasti passed away recently. What was his profession? Right answer is politician. Ashok Gasti, a Rajya Sabha MP from Karnataka, passed away due to COVID-19. He was the first time MP who took oath as a member of Rajya Sabha in July 2020. He was a lawyer by profession and former general secretary of BJP. Previously, he had also served as chairperson of the Backward Class Development Corporation in Karnataka. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has launched Gartak Fiber Project in which state recently? Answer is Bihar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the Gartak Fiber Project in Bihar. Under this, all the villages of Bihar will be connected through optical fiber internet service. This project will be executed by combined efforts of Department of Telecom, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and Common Service Centers. Government also announced its target to connect 6 lakh villages across the country to the internet in the coming thousand days. Also remember some recent news about Bihar. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has inaugurated Kosi Rail Mega Bridge in Bihar. And also, Prime Minister inaugurated 900 crore worth petroleum project in Bihar. Another one is, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari inaugurated upstream carriageway of Mahatma Gandhi Bridge in Bihar. And another one is, the Union Cabinet has approved establishment of a new All India Institute of Medical Sciences at Darbanga, Bihar. Also remember, India's first Kisan Rail was between Maharashtra's Devlali and Bihar's Danapur Railway Station. And recently we discussed about South India's first Kisan Rail. Where was it flagged off? Andhra Pradesh. Next question is, first ever direct cargo ferry service unveiled between India and which country recently? Right answer is Maldives. India and the Maldives has launched the first ever direct cargo ferry service to boost trade between the two countries. The cargo ferry service will connect the Indian ports of Tuti Korin and Cochin ports with the ports in the Maldives. This initiative will help to cut costs and reduce the time taken to transport goods between the two countries. Some recent news about India and Maldives are India and Maldives signed a contract for the development of five ecotourism zones. India and Maldives signed a contract for construction of fish processing plants. India signed another agreement with Maldives for establishment of emergency medical services. And also, India handed over outdoor fitness equipment for 61 islands across Maldives. About Maldives, Maldives is in South Asia. Its capital is Malay and currency is Maldivian Rufia. Next one is Government unveiled which multi stakeholder platform to prepare young people career ready as per 21st century? Right answer is UA. Sports Ministry and UNICEF have signed a statement of intent to establish UA Generation Unlimited, a global multi stakeholder platform in India to equip young people in India with the skills they need to fulfill their potential and lift up their communities. The UI initiative is linked to the Global Generation Unlimited Movement of UNICEF, which began in New York in September 2018. The objective of UA project is to support young people by providing entrepreneurship classes online and offline, upskilling of young people on 21st century works and skills, create linkages with aspirational economic opportunities and providing career guidance support to young people. Next one is, when is World Rhino Day observed? Answer is 22nd September. World Rhino Day is observed every year on 22nd September. This day is observed to raise awareness of the need to protect all the existing species of rhinoceros. Do you know what are these five remaining species? Black Rhino, Greater One Horned Rhino, White Rhino, Sumatran Rhino and Javan Rhino. World Rhino Day was first announced by World Wildlife Fund South Africa in 2010 and is being observed internationally since 2011. Next question is, who is the author of the book titled Kitchens of Gratitude? Answer is Vikas Kanna. Vikas Kanna is the author of the book Kitchens of Gratitude in which he has written about his Feed India initiative. Recently we discussed about Feed India if you remember. 
Chef Vikas Khanna has been honored with the 2020 Asia Game Changer Award for his initiative Feed India. Feed India initiative is one of the largest food drives in the world serving meals to the underprivileged during the COVID-19 pandemic. And this book is about this initiative and this will be released in 2021. Next question is Google Pay has partnered with which financial services corporation for card based payments with tokenization? Answer is Visa. Google Pay has partnered with Visa for tokenization that will enable users to safely transact with their debit or credit cards. Through tokenization, Google Pay users can make payment by using the debit or credit card without physically sharing their credit or debit card details through a secure digital token attached to their phone. This will also help the user in tap to pay method on near field communication enabled point of sale terminals and online merchants. At present, this feature is available to the users of Axis, SBI and Kotak. Visa is an American multinational financial services corporation which was founded in 1958 and its headquarters is in California, United States. Next one is who has been appointed as the new chief of National Technical Research Organization recently? Answer is Anil Dasmana. The appointments committee of the cabinet has approved the appointment of Anil Dasmana as the new chief of National Technical Research Organization. He is a 1981 batch officer of Madhya Pradesh cadre and previously served as the chief of RAW from 2017 to 2019. He will replace former intelligence bureau officer Satish Chandraja. National Technical Research Organization is a technical intelligence agency under the National Security Advisor in the Prime Minister's office which looks after geospatial intelligence and satellite imagery. Next one is who is the winner of Women's 2020 Italian Open Tennis title? Answer is Simona Halep. Simona Halep is the winner of Women's 2020 Italian Open Tennis title. She defeated Carolina Liskova in the final to win the title. And in men's, Novak Djokovic is the winner of the title. So remember, Women's title winner of Italian Open Tennis title is Simona Halep and men's title winner is Novak Djokovic. Also remember recently we discussed about the US Open title winners in that men's singles title winner is Dominic Thiem and the women's singles winner is Naomi Osaka. Next question is the Ministry of Corporate Affairs extended the tenure of company law committee by one year. Who is the head of this committee? Answer is Rajesh Varma. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs has extended the tenure of the company law committee by one year until September 2021. Corporate Affairs Secretary Rajesh Verma is the present chairperson of the committee. This committee has a total of 11 members. The committee was set up to suggest measures to improve functioning of the National Company Law Tribunal and also make recommendations on issues pertaining to implementation of the Companies Act and Limited Liability Partnership Act. The National Company Law Tribunal is a quasi-judicial body in India that adjudicates issues relating to Indian companies. Next one is Zakia Inam passed away recently. What was her profession? Answer is politician. Zakia Inam, the former minister of Rajasthan and three times MLA from Tonk constituency has passed away due to COVID infection. She was the only woman candidate who became MLA three times in Rajasthan. Previously, she handled the ministries of Health, Women and Child Welfare in Rajasthan government. 